Mike Benici, and yeah, I'm a glazier by trade. Fishing probably the last solidly for the last maybe eight years, but spearfishing, same amount again before that. A lot of the spots I fish now is where I used to dive, and but I know what's where. Things do change over the years, I'm, I've noticed as well, and also having good diver mates helps, and we sort of cross reference, and everything still so. Being a spear fisherman prior to fishing has yeah, helped me massively. Grew up out west, sort of always, always loved spear fishing or being on the water. Trying to get out here is every afternoon after work. I used to go spear fishing, just rock hopping mainly. Um, and then bought a boat, got a group of mates. We used to go spear fishing. I had, I had a couple of tinnies before I sort of got serious, and I, I bought a Seafarer Viking, the old duckbill one. That was a good boat. And then um, yeah, we got into spear fishing competitions and. Everyone had all tricked up boats and the sea devil, one of my mates had a sea devil and that was the only one that I really liked. Never, we never went in one, I just sort of, he was always leading the race so I won one of them and just basically rang up sea devil to buy a second hand one. Yeah, they offered me a good price on a new one so I went a new one. Uh, yeah, this one's 620, it's pretty much got the flooding keel, real deep V, um, the sharp entry, great ride. It's sort of a fast travelling boat I would say. When I go fishing it's generally uh, anywhere from 100 to 150 k's a day on average. Something that can move around pretty quick and comfortably is what suits me, something fishable. On the back I've got a G2 250 HO Evinrude. It's been yeah, unbelievable for me. I'm not, not someone that sort of talks a bit of crap. So I'm running a pair of Simrads, the NSS Evo 2 in the 12 inch. I run that for the chart plotter and the S2016 for a sounder. I like running a split in the Eco in the sounder um, just to run two different frequencies generally. Bigger screen, I can see it from further back, I'm, you know, if I'm fishing down the back or it's just easier in general. Uh, I originally started with a wet box just to try and keep everything off the transom because these things have a wet uh, flooding keel so it sort of makes it hard for through holes. It was a good, good transducer, it just didn't pick up, didn't like how it picked up at speed because one of the chines was sort of running over the face of it so I tried to, I went to the transom mount. TM275 high low wide. Game fishing I run Generally keep it on high chirp and I run a different frequency, whether it's a 150 to 200, because I've got the screen the screen size to run to clearly, it's been good. The, the high has definitely got a, a good arch, picks up good, it's trolling speed. Yeah, a lot of times when we're trolling, uh, we'll mark a fish and you, sometimes you see them streaking up and then you know you look back in the spread and there's a mile and you go, oh, how good's that? You know, you'll be able to see it before it actually comes up. But I like to, to run fairly high gain, um, just so you don't miss anything. You can definitely tell the fish through the gain uh, once you sort of get used to your sounder and I think the biggest thing is actually marking fish and getting confidence in it all. Pretty much plug and play, you know, there's a couple of settings with your uh, surface clutter and you can, you know, you minimise that. Not too much, you put it on, I usually run it on low. You gain, you can run on auto but I generally run on manual just to sort of play around with it. Yeah, so I run a Simrad radio, I went the R35, uh, a few things, it's got AIS and I um, also it's got a really good speaker when you're travelling. I noticed some of them don't have a, a loud speaker and you have to run a loud hailer separate. But no, this one's really, really crisp and it comes out of the, the mic also. 